Do you remember when anime was about a few lonely guys trading tapes with one another, incessantly coming over to one another's house to talk about the next mecha figure that they got, or to speak to one another about the greatest waifu of the season, how the only way that they could get these shows was by explicitly trying to get a mail order from another fan, or by trying to go to a seedy shop that has all of the imported anime at exorbitant costs. This was what anime fandom was. It was shows like Otaku no Video, in which the otaku king would seek to become the supreme leader of the movement of weirdos and geeks trying to be outlawed from society because they themselves, their identity was already too distinct to be in society in the first place. And the act of being an otaku, the act of buying these things and indulging in them, was in and of itself an act of rebellion against the fact that they were alienated by that society. They were getting together and they were saying, we're weird, fuck you for alienating us for that. Because we're weird, we're going to try and build ourselves up to be even more weird just to spit in your face. And so, the real message of otaku, what otaku itself represents, this romanticized love and obsession with anime, what it is at its core is the rebellion against alienation. It's looking at social norms and it's laughing at them, it's saying these social norms are dumb, this system is not a system that we need to be using. In fact, I don't like this system so much that I would much rather do what I enjoy all the time. That I enjoy what I enjoy so much that I'm going to make my life that and I'm going to say fuck you because I enjoy that. And because this society isn't allowing me to do that, I'm going to build my own system instead. That's what otaku is at its core. But when I watch someone like Get In The Robot, I can't help but feel a little bit cheated. Because you look at the channel, and the presenter is this cute girl, her hair is a bit rugged, you can tell she doesn't look like a, a huge normie, you know, she has this flair about her that is typical of the nerd that you're s supposed to see walking down the street, you know, maybe with an anime t-shirt on, their hair is dyed because they want to look distinct from other people. They aren't the normal flair that you would see around. And this, ostensibly, is something that we can identify with otaku. It's something that feels authentic. But as you watch the videos, you slowly seem to see a resurgence of, you know, clips and clips and clips, studio film directing, this very professional editing style, music that's edited on as well, that kind of adds to that. The jokes, the jokes feel very much like something you would find on Reddit, something that would be totally typical of normal people discussing anime with one another. And then you scroll down, and you see that the person who wrote the video isn't actually the person who's speaking in it. You begin to see research by Casey Gonzalez, written by Daniel Borgos, edited by Steffi Neptune, and the list goes on. They even have a fucking manager on the project. They have executive producers making these things. How, how, are, how are we supposed to take this as being authentic when it was obviously obviously built from a managerial position. All of the titles, all of the topics were built specifically to make the most money out of anime. And then you look at the, the Twitter for the people who make these videos, and it's all like My Hero Academia, Mob Psycho, you know, Detective Pikachu, typical stuff. Things that everyone would know about with even half sense. And when I, when I look at these, these people who made this video, and I look at the fact that it had to have a literal production team to come into existence, I can't help but feel the fact that the presenter that they chose looks this way, looks like a nerd, is in and of itself inauthentic. The fact that they have to reference so many different clips just to make their videos look smart, as if they've seen a bunch of anime. The fact that they have to doll themselves up in this otaku mindset using otaku language, only to do so 
for the sake of marketability, only to do so to give that dolled up package in a more marketable form, is condescending. It's taking away what initially was the point of otaku, and it just feels wrong on some level. It just feels like they're trying to commodify what one would normally see as being authentic, that the rebellion against society, the ultimate form of authenticity that came in the passion of otaku, has now been squandered so much that the surface level elements of that passion have been taken to be turned into a marketing ploy. When I look at this, I feel like it's just not genuine. And sure, maybe some of the people who are working on the project like it, and maybe some of them care, but that's not the point. You go on their Instagram and it's nothing but quotes from Deku and Attack on Titan and Gurren Lagann, and you know, you know this is trying as hard as it can to appeal to the normie crowd. This isn't otaku, this isn't people, you know, coming into the basement with one another to trade pirated VHS tapes with acid wash subtitles. This isn't people communally partaking in a group that means something to one another, that are sharing the love of anime for the sake of anime spending nights upon nights trying to get videos out just because they're passionate about talking about a certain show, spending nights and nights trying to acid wash subtitles onto these shows when you can't even speak Japanese that well, but you're trying your damned best to get these shows to other people because you care. That is what otaku is. And when I see this, I can't help but feel that all of these individuals that came together came together for the sake of making more money. It wasn't something that came about naturally, out of love and passion and care. It was something that Fred Siebert had to come up and say, I see an opportunity to make money. Let's get some more people onto this. That's the really sad thing about our anime community today, is that the surface level elements of otaku have been maligned so much that they don't even mean anything anymore. They're just marketing tactics. It's like when normies run around and they have punk rock t-shirts on, or when they turn the punk uh, style into a actual fashion sense instead of a rebellion against that fashion sense. It no longer has the countercultural meaning that it had in the beginning, and it becomes less authentic as a result of that. We're seeing a commodification of authenticity in anime and anime discourse through people like this. People who can actually make money uploading every week off of heavily edited, studio-produced videos that are trying to tell you that they're otaku, that are trying to tell you they're these weird, deep-level anime fans. But that's not what it is. Anyone who takes even a cursory glance at this knows that's not what this is. I don't know, man. <clears throat> Get in the Robot is a commodification of authenticity. It's trying to sell a product based on what people believe to be real, what they believe to be true. These surface level elements that many of us in the anime community can identify with and have experience are now being turned into nothing but shameless products. That meaning, that sentiment that would be behind such things, is something that I can only see being lost more over time. And that's the real tragedy of money. 